So I'm uh, Ronnie Fryman from Mellanox, and we're going to talk about uh, tunnel, DPDK tunneling offload. Okay, so I will start, of course, to introduce what is tunneling in case there are some people that's still not familiar with that. Okay, so tunneling, it's a way of putting things inside kind of a tunnel. That's, and for example, we have a VXLAN or NV, sorry, a VXLAN, NVGRE, uh, Genev, there are many new tunnels that's using, used today. Uh, but the concept, I didn't touch it. Okay, so the concept is that you have the original packet is raped. You see, I didn't touch it. <laughs> you proved your point. Yeah, the black, the back one, the red one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, what you, what is tunneling is doing is take the original packet that it has an Ethernet, sometimes not only, sometimes not the Ethernet and only the IP, and the TCP and the UDP or the TCP of the inner packet, and put it inside, encapsulated inside a tunnel. Uh, for example, a VXLAN tunnel is that you have a, a VXLAN is on top of UDP, and of course there is a layer three, an IP, could be IPv4, IPv6, and another, uh, Ethernet header, if it's uh, Ethernet. Um, the problem is that all the acceleration that we had in the past uh, for checksum offload, the TSO, uh, was, uh, are broken. Uh, the RSS is also broken. It's, it's not working well. So It's not working well. Like this, yes. Okay, now go to the next slide. Okay. Only one. Okay. And so why, why we talk about tunnels? Because today, all the modern uh, data centers are working with tunnels. So we, we need to support them. And as I mentioned before, uh, everything is broken. So we fix it. So I think it's a, it's a work that's done in the last year or even more a little bit. So now we, 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 we will see examples to how to use it, of course. And uh, so we fix the RSS, that you can do an RSS on the inner packet. Uh, we, 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 I mean, the DPDK community, it's not just Mellanox. Um, we enable also to do a checksum on the inner. So you get a checksum for the inner, so when you, traf you can forward the traffic to virtual machine, you can specify that the TCP checksum of the inner is fine. So think about it, if it's not working, it means that you need to calculate the checks, you need to go all over the packet just to calculate the checksum. So this is a huge overhead. For example, it's, when we tested, it's around 30%, 30% more CPU and 30% uh, more packets, that's, uh, less packets that you will gain if you, not ha you don't have it. So it's not like a small thing. And what we also will, uh, will show is uh, switching. So today we're talking about rules. Uh, the guys uh, explain nicely uh, what is an RTE flow. And I think we also extend the, the way uh, how to consume RTE flow with an action of incap and decap. So I will let my friend uh, explain the details. Okay, it looks like it's working right now. Yeah, for you. you have. So um, yep, I'm Yong Sok from Mellanox and um, I'm gonna present you what we, oh no, it's not working. <laughs> let me handle it for you. <laughs> So I'm going to present I'll you. I'll do the offload. Oh, uh, yeah. Here's my offload. So, uh, yeah, uh, many of you are already aware that um, uh, DPDK has the RTE flow library to support 
uh, the flow uh, matching in action. So the um, I'm going to present you know you know what's been there for tunneling offload and what's new. I mean we've already uh, we've uh, we've um, we've included some of new um, APIs and you know kind of functions uh, for the 1811. So I'm going to you know, briefly go over what's new and what's been there uh, for long. So the first of all, uh, as Ronnie mentioned, you know, it is kind of basic. Just go back. Yeah, it's kind of basic in our RSS. Um, to, reach, uh, to achieve uh, uniform distribution uh, among queues uh, for the terminal packet, um, if the transport is UDP, then um, there's nothing, you know, there's not much, um, you know, things wor to worry about because, uh, you know, UDP, a header has the source port, so the, you know, by by changing the source port, we can get you know kind of uniform distribution. But if the tunnel is like a L3 uh, tunnel, for example, the GLE, then uh, there's, uh, of course, we can use the outer IP header for uh, the RSS hash. But you know, sometimes in the tunnel network, the overlay network is, has you know ident identical IP headers then, you know, that's, that will be a problem. Then, you know, in that case, people can use the inner, um, RS, uh, inner header for the RSS hash. Yeah, that's one thing you can do. How to configure that? Um, yeah, it's f slides are flying. We're gonna fix it. We're gonna fix it. Okay. Okay. Try to continue. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, uh, unless you have balloons or something that you want to, <laughs> to show how you practice. Right. So the, in the LT flow, you know, there's an action LT flow RSS, and then inside that action, there's a there's an attribute to config to set uh, the level. So the if you set zero, then that will, that means the you know it will have the default behavior. Default means the NIC you know has its own default mode, and then if you set one, that you know then the action will be taken according to the outermost header. And if you set two or higher, then that means the inner header. So that uh, test PMD example is to, you know, configure some, is to create a new, create a, create a rule, you know, the having pattern like, you know, if IPv4, it's actually, you know, VXLAN uh, terminal. And if you set the RSS level two like that, you know, in that action part, then the, you know, it, it, it does mean, you know, the inner header should be used for the RSS hash. Next. So uh, it's a kind of basic, but you know, um, some of you might not, uh, aware, might not be aware of this uh, new flag, the device capability flag, uh, which is introduced like, you know, almost a year ago, I guess. Uh, so the, um, <laughs> no, is that? Yeah. Okay, it's, all right, yeah. So if, 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 uh, if you get in, if you call the get in for kind of, you know, the RT uh, API to, uh, to, to, to know that uh, uh, the device's capability, if the device has this kind of uh, uh, flag, dev rx offload xxx checksum, it means you know you can use uh, you can uh, I mean it means that the PMD is does support you know that kind of checksum offload on the rx path. So the the PMDs uh, which support that you know will mark the mbuff ol flags with that kind of uh, packet uh, mbuff flag. So that means you know, whether the checksum is good or bad or you know, none or unknown. And if the device has that uh, TX offload XXX checksum uh, flag, then it does mean that you, know, you can set um, OL flags with packet TX XX checksum, which is basically you know, requesting uh, you know, device doing the checksum offload. For the inner TSO, which is quite critical, you know, sometimes in the data center. Uh, application can request 
the inner TSO by setting that TX TCP SAC flag along with that um, IPv4 6 flag. That means the outer header. Oh, I'm sorry, the inner header. And and of course, you know, for IP, IPv4 packet, you should set the IP checksum uh, offload uh, flag as well. So the, there are two uh, two kinds of um, device capability flag, which is the I mean, offload uh, VXLAN, GLE, IPIP, Genev, terminal TSO. Uh, that's been there for quite long, but um, uh, I remember 18 from 1805. Uh, we've added uh, DevTX offload IP or UDP tunnel TSO. That's for kind of generic tunnel offload. So the, even though it is not a specified like, you know, VXLAN, GLE, IP, IP, GNIV, you know, you, by specifying the, by specifying that uh, outer, no, here, by specifying that outer L2 length and outer L3 length and, you know, kind of offsets in the packet, in the MBUF, then you know, device can know that uh, where to find uh, the IP header or, or the TCP header inside a packet. So the, even though you know, it is unknown or proprietary terminal, you can offload that as well, if the device supports that. For in-cap, decap, uh, we've been having this uh, for a long time, not for a long time, you know, until 1808. Um, uh, we had uh, VXLAN and MVGLE uh, in cap decap actions. And then it took, it takes a list of RT flow items for in cap header and needed to define more. T but, you know, there are so many other tunnels, you know, other than VXLAN and MVGLE. So we had to define more tunnels with kind of more efficient way. And then, even in case of um, MPLS over UDP or VXLAN GPE, there's no L2 header, you know, in, in the inner part, right? There's no inner L2 header. Usually it takes out uh, the Ethernet header and it, it has the, you know, IP header right next to the tunnel header. So in that case, we call it as, you know, kind of L3 in-cap, decap, uh, um, L3 encapsulation, and decapsulation. For doing that, uh, we introduced a new action type, uh, row in cap, decap. It is also, you know, to define kind of generic, generic in cap, decap action. And it's added in 1811, which is a very fresh one. So the in cap header is specified with row data. So it doesn't have the list of RT flow items, but it, it, it takes, you know, a buffer, a buffer address to, which has the, you know, the entire in cap, in cap header. So the device will take that raw data for the in-cap header. And for the L3 in-cap, decap thing, um, we, uh, we decided to, we means, you know, community, right? The DPDK community, we decided to uh, use two actions to, you know, to encapsulation or decapsulation, that kind of L3 um, uh, terminal. For example, you know, the, if the original packet is like, you know, L2, standard L2 ethernet header, uh, L2 packet, then you know it has to decap L2 first, and then incap MPLS over UDP, like that. So by doing that, you know we can we can successfully uh, encapsulate encapsulate the L3 uh, terminal. And yeah, that means you know when you specify the uh, course of actions, you have to specify two two actions for that. And we also introduced you know the modify header. Action so the RT flow action type set xxx that uh, that includes a Mac source test IPv4 IPv6 source test and then TP means transport that L4 either either UC, uh, UDP or TCP and the uh, RT flow action set or decrease TTL that's also defined in in, in 1811 release. And it's also, as you, got, as you know, you know, it is very suitable for the net or hairpin. If, uh, also, uh, we wanted to define one more um, good um, RT flow item. I'm sorry. Um, in 1811, we added that item meta. So that means the, you can use, you know, some metadata matching on, on the egress side. So the, 
Um, if you want to, you know, if you want match on egress, you should uh, set the TX metadata, which is, you know, kind of newly defined um, field in the MBUF, RT MBUF. You have to define that TX meta, uh, you have to set that TX metadata, which is 32 bits, and then and also have to set the OL flags with the TX metadata. Then device will know that, oh, this packet has to be matched on, you know, on the metadata, which is preset uh, on, on, on the device. So why is it needed? Uh, it is very useful to apply, you know, different in-cap, decap actions between, you know, different VMs. Sometimes, you know, you know, VMs on a host, you know, you know, the network topology, you know, is, could be identical, right? So there's no way to distinguish between, you know, different VMs if it uses kind of same net, uh, IP, you know, network addresses. Then we had to have a way to distinguish different VMs, I mean, between different VMs. So the, you know, in this case, the VM ID can be used as a metadata. And then, you know, the device can apply different in-cap, decap actions according to the metadata on, you know, on the descriptor. Okay, so the Ronnie will give you some more yeah. examples. Okay, so how, after uh, we describe with a lot of details uh, the things that we added into DPDK, uh, now to show what is actually you can do with that. So uh, as we mentioned, we, we talk about tunnels. Usually tunnels using, using a VTAP. No, no, but I need a pointer. Okay. Um, so using, um, sorry, so tunnels usually used when you have a switch on top of it. So for example, like an OVS or something else, you have a, a, you have a virtual IO interfaces uh, that belong to a virtual machines, and you want to create a, a switch logic that's doing it also tunneling. So in order to do that, you need to do three things. Three things. You need to know you have a, a, a logic, a switch logic that's handled it. So, give you all the rules. What what is the the rules that traffic is coming from a VM and going to the wire, or vice versa, receiving and transmitting, and uh, what to do with traffic and how to forward actually the traffic that is coming from a VM and from the wire. Um, the concept here is to, of course, to, ha to, to use less CPU as much as possible. So in order to do that, uh, look on the, um, this way the pointer is working, I'm not sure. Okay, so if you look on the picture on the right side, you see on the top, you see three VMs, the blue ones, and each of them has a virtual interface. Uh, at, it, at the host, you do have all the queues and the DPDK application, and kind of a NIC, all the, all the NIC today are kind of smart NICs. And, and what we want to do is to offload the, the switch logic. So we take the rules from the controller, from the switch logic, so, and if there is a rule on transmit, which means that the traffic that is coming from a specific VM need to, uh, to do a specific action. What need to do a match on specific fields and an action. A match can be a match on the destination IP, for example, if you want to do that thing, uh, or destination MAC, in order to get it to the right tunnel, to do the right in-cap, or you can go ahead and implement a, a routing, uh, like DVR, you can, you can do also NAT. It's up to the, the, to the um, switch application, what you want to implement. But in any case, the, the concept is that you have a match on, any f uh, on the fields of the inner and a match of the VM. The match of the VM, probably if it's a single queue, it will be by uh, a way that you have a metadata or you have a dedicated queue for each VM. So this is two concepts that can be used. Um, but you get, you take all the rules from the switch control, 
into the, into the hardware using RTE flow. So we spoke about the, the TX side. So in case, and then there is the receive side. So all the traffic that's coming from the wire are handled by the silicon, and we're adding a rules uh, with a match. A match could be on the outer, of course, the tunnel information. So it's mean that's the destination IP, that is the destination IP of the server, uh, that is a UDP, a VXLAN, and also on the inner. So the inner information, it's mean that's the, the destination MAC, it could be also the, um, the inner IP address or even a TCP port if you want to implement, again, uh, NAT and those kind of uh, things. So all those rules with action, of course, to decouple the packet because actually the, the, um, the switch logic is going to forward this traffic to a specific VM. So what is needed to, to, to ask from the hardware is match on those fields, inner and outer, and put a tag on the packet number X. And according to number X, the software of the, the DBDK software is pulling from the MBUF the ID, the metadata, and know where to, to, if to do an action, if it's a NAT or something that's actually we do, we have an action to do, and we didn't do it in the hardware because we can do also the header rewrite in the hardware. And if you decided, you know, to go to connection tracking and all those kind of stuff, you can do it in the software. And then to forward this packet to the virtual machine, to the virtual interface. So in that way, you don't need to consume, even if you don't need to change the packet, you don't even need to touch the buffer because you get with the, in the MBUF information, uh, a metadata that can tell you what to do. So you don't need to pass the packet, you don't need to do anything. So this is uh, the receive, the transmit, and there are also a Lubeck case. So a Lubeck case, it means that one VM wants to speak to another VM. So this actually have two kind of flows. It means that uh, one VM is sending the packet, so we need to have a rule that's on the send side, and this packet need to be looped back. So the action of this, of this uh, rule won't be to do the, an in-cap and send to the wire because it's actually on this machine. So actually what we're doing, we're doing a loopback and put a metadata on the packet. Uh, in the, um, and then when we receive, and then we add also a rule, of course, on the receive side, that's mentioning the same thing. Look on there if it's a loopback packet and which is the metadata, so we understand that this is a loopback, and then we look on the, in, on the inner part to understand what we need to, encapsulate, to, to, do the, the, to do the decapsulation and forward it to the right VM. So this is the rules that we take to the hardware. So the TPTK application, actually, it's become very simple. A packet that's coming from the VM, so we have, okay, we have two, thing, two, two ways to work. We can create a queue per VM, then we can connect a V-ring of the Virtio to a dedicated queue, or we can create a single queue per core, of course, and set a metadata that is mentioning from which VM the packet is coming to. So actually what the program need to do on the transmit side is to pull all the V-rings from the, uh, the all the V-rings uh, from the VHost the v -host V-rings, pull the packets, don't parse the packet, don't look, don't touch the data, immediately transmit the packet. That's all, that's all. Because, and, and, and if it's a metadata, just put the metadata. It's according to the queue. So the, the program is very simple. You don't consume almost any CPU. You don't touch the data. You're just forwarding the traffic. Um, because all the rules are already in hardware. So it means that the hardware will do the parsing, will do the checksumming, will do the encapsulation, will do the rewrite if needed, and will forward or we will loop back it to a different VM, uh, VM that's in, on the same machine, or we'll encapsulate the packet and send it to the wire. On the, send, on the receive side, uh, a packet that's, uh, that's arrived from the wire will have rules inside the hardware, as was defined, 
So what you just get, you get a metadata with the packet, what, what the application need to do, just to copy it to the right VM. So it's also, you don't, the, the software don't need to parse, don't need to touch the data. Very quick implementation. And if we want to make it more complicated, uh, and we want to use a zero copy, so we will create, sorry, we will create a receive queue for each VM, of each V-ring, actually, if it could be that's a, a virtual interface will have a, a few queues. And then what we can do in order to not to do a copy, we can use the buffers of the virtual and to use them in the hardware. So we can use buffers from the VM, and when you do the, the post receive, when you put the, the buffer on the receive queue, for each receive queue, you use a specific buffer set that is coming from the VM. And then you can, you even not need to do the copy of the packet. Um, that's all. Uh, question, we do have uh, three and a half minutes. Go ahead. So I was just wondering how you guys handle the fragmented packets for the inner headers, like for RSS. Uh, sorry, can you repeat? So how do you handle the fragmented packets for inner RSS, say, for example, okay. without breaking functionality? So fragments packet is it's a problem in the, uh, because you need to understand the fragment. You need to build the packet. So it's stateful, it's not stateless. So, but actually, if you look at a, a normal fabric, you don't want to see fragments. Yeah, but you don't control, right? So all the fragments going to the slope, actually a kind of a slow path, and you, you handle it. So the hardware can, can classify it's a fragment packet, if it's a first fragment or a second fragment, and we don't try to deal with that, because it's complicated, and it's less common to have fragment traffic. Uh, in principle, um, we don't want to spread the fragmented packets you know, all over the core. So, the, if if there's some, you know, the the fragmentation is, you know, if a packet is fragmented, right, then we usually put that, you know, entire packet fragments to a specific single core, so that the core can assemble the packet and then, you know, take the take, you know. The appropriate action for that. So you got to do reordering for those packets with the non-fragmented ones. I'm sorry. So you have to do reordering for those packets with the non-fragmented ones um, afterwards. Rather than reordering that, we just you know f the forward all the fragmented packets to a s specific core. For let's say for example core zero, and then so that the core zero can take care you know can assemble the packet to see if you know there's you know the, you know which kind of action has to be taken for that. So yeah, yeah that's basically what we are doing in principle. Yeah. Okay, thank you. The, the problem with fragment, that's when you get the packet, the second fragment, you can't do nothing with it. You still need to, to be, you first need to build all the information according to the, the, packet, the first packet. So today we describe how you, you can, can, can implement a very efficient, uh, using a, a smart NIC, um, a switch logic, uh, with, a VIX, with a tunneling, and that's, it's very, very tight build to Virtio. And actually, the software need to forward the traffic. Uh, tomorrow, you're welcome, uh, here, same place, uh, for a session to how we can use um, a more modern way uh, to using like, uh, like SROV, and to have a hardware, a fully hardware offload that we can can set the same concept and actually forward the traffic to the virtual machine and not to have a DPDK application that is forwarding the traffic, but to use a DPDK RTE flow, but with action actually to take the traffic to the virtual machine itself. Time's up. Thank you very much. Thank you.